with nearly 400,000 of you live around the world, ready for Cumero Numero Uno. Let's get down to the nitty gritty and get this show on the road. Saturday night, baby, Q1. Which continent is the United States on? North America, Australia, or Asia? Live at 9.05, baby. It helps to remember that the full name is the United States of America. Big clue to the continent in there. It's the, it's the U.S., Mexico, and Canada all holed up in North America. America. <laughs> F, yeah. North American scum. 314,019. You're not scummy. Um, I'm not going to cast aspersions on the rest of you. You got that one wrong. But uh, no, the United States is not in Australia. As much as I would love to go back to Australia. Q2. Which of these animals does not have tusks? Grizzly bear, elephant, or warthog? Nature has a way of giving you what you need to survive in the wild. Unless you're a naked mole rat, then you got nothing. Not even clothes on your back. But grizzly bears, they pack a mean set of chompers. There's no need to gild the lily with a pair of tusks to boot. Grizzly bears, your answer. Oh, 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 oh. 306,729 got that right. Maybe 700 of you got my little musical reference there. Two weeks, Q3. In the game Yahtzee, what is a Yahtzee? Five matching dice, a large boat, or a full hand of cards. One of the family game night classics. Yahtzee teaches virtues like long-term thinking, adapting to change, and yelling out, Yahtzee, when the best possible situation occurs, which would be five matching dice, all showing the same amount. Oh, it's no dice for 7,000 plus, for, but 296,000. 94 of you. You're going to get to roll again. No, the yachts have nothing to do with Yahtzee. Large boat. I guess I fooled some of you there. Sorry. Q4. If chicken cordon bleu was a truly accurate name, which would be an ingredient? Ribbon, sky, or plate? Remember, accurate, literal translations we're talking about here, okay? This is the height of cuisine. Chicken with a slice of ham wrapped around cheese, breaded and fried. Mmm, cordon bleu. It's also a catch-all term coming from the French knights who were decorated in a light blue sash, basically a big ribbon. Mm -hmm. The terms apply to food prepared by the highest standards these days. 115,973! I'm giving you a sash. I'm giving you a nice blue ribbon for getting that one right. 106,022. I guess you got fooled by the blue sky. You're out of there. We lost 150 plus of you. Ouchie. Wowie. That was a tough one. Savish. Let's go to Q5 here. Name checked in the song. What artist helped inspire Leonard Skinner's Sweet Home Alabama? Neil Young, Bob Dylan, or John Denver? Oh, the best musical beef isn't going to be found with, between Meek Mill and Drake. No, it's found in 70s rock. All right. This guy released a song called Southern Man, accusing Southern white men of racism. Huh. Leonard Skinner responded in 1972 saying, Well, I heard Mr. Young sing about her. Well, I heard old Neil put her down. Well, I hope Neil Young will remember. A southern man don't need him around anyhow. 70,894. Remember, they're southern fried country rock. You're getting sweet home Q6 tonight. Leonard Skinner and Neil Young. Button heads there. Q6. Where would you see a croupier working? Stable, casino, or barbershop? Some jobs sound better with a fancy name. Try sommelier for wino, an esthetician instead of person who waxes lady parts. The croupier is the employee responsible for running a gambling table at a casino. Oh, croup. Bands in the croup, busting out the roof. I got bands in the croup. 49,986 could be enjoying those bands tonight if they make it all the way to Q12. For the rest of you, Snake Eyes at Q6. We lost 30,000 of you there. Maybe you got an extra life to keep you in. If you want to press your luck at Q7, let's roll it again. What NBA Hall of Fame athlete scored just a single three-pointer in his entire career? Karl Malone, Wilt Chamberlain, or Shaquille O'Neal? This is proof you don't have to master every skill to become a legend. 
This guy was certainly an underachiever on three-pointers, scoring only one in 22 career attempts. I did give you a bit of a hint there in the intro if you were listening. He still made the Hall of Fame with no sweat because he's the big shamrock, a.k.a. Wilt Chamberneasy, a.k.a. Shaq Diesel, Shaq Fu, Shaquille O'Neal. This is a good time to tell you folks that when I was a, a child, I had a pet cockatiel named Shaquille Cockatiel O'Neal. That is a true story. That was really my sister's bird, but I'll take credit for it, the name. 29,284. You don't miss. Swoosh. Rest of you, a little, little air ball action at Q7 coming up short. Q8. The first ever movie with a Happy Meal tie-in is part of what series? Star Trek, Superman, or James Bond? Today you can hardly make any movie without a Happy Meal promotion popping up. I gotta say, the hereditary one was quite disturbing. But the very first movie Happy Meal was back in 1979 for the ponderous two-hour, 12-minute epic Star Trek. Unite and bring your kids to McDonald's for a Star Trek meal. That's a regular hamburger, fries, soft drink, a McDonald's and cookie sampler, and a Star Trek prize. Star Trek, the motion picture. Trekkies make some noise. 21,761 living long and prospering on tonight's quiz. The rest of you, you just can't do it, Captain. You don't have the power. Beam me up, Scotty. That's what you're saying. Oh, I'll beam you up to Q9. How about that? Who did not star in the Hans and Franz sketches on Saturday Night Live? Dana Carvey, Kevin Nealon, or Phil Hartman? It's Saturday Night Live, not Saturday and Live, as we have to often remind some of you people out there. <clears throat> Hear me now, but leave me later. One was Hans, the other was Franz, and they just wanted to pump you up. It's a classic 90s SNL routine from Dana Carvey and Kevin Nealon. Phil Hartman was busy being unfrozen, prehistoric, and litigious. Wake up and smell the muscles. 18,615. You're up. You're Adam. The rest of you, you need to hit the gym. Come on, pump it up. Right now we're pumping up. Q10. This temple was built by adherents of what faith? Take a look. Ooh, multimedia question. Was that temple built by adherents of Buddhism, Sikhism, or Hinduism? Angkor Wat has spent most of its time as a tourist attraction and a Buddhist temple, but it was originally built in the 12th century as a temple to Vishnu of the Hindu faith. Yes, originally Hinduism. Oh, 9,078. Got this one right. I was expecting some savagery here, I'll be honest. At Q10, we did lose over 10,000. Pretty brutal question. Lost more than half of you there. 9,078. Still in this. Is there a chance the trek could bend? Not in your life, my Hindu friend. We're getting Q11. Which of these places is biggest by population? California, Borneo, or Saudi Arabia? Still recovering from a little sore throat action. Horse! I'm a little horse! <clears throat> Sounded like Funkhauser! Rest in peace, Bob Einstein. There are 7 billion people spread around 15 billion acres on this green earth. The island of Borneo has 21 million of them, which comes in behind the 33 million in Saudi Arabia. But wouldn't you know, the Golden State beats them both with nearly 40 million people. Yes, 8,468. You've been on the run, driving in the sun, looking out for number one. California, here we come, right back where we started from. Oh, we're going all the way to Q12 right now. We're taking that 101, that Route 5, all the way up to the bay. Q11, no, Q12, we did Q11, it's Q12 time, it's the final round, baby. P.T. Piers, March Madness, baby. It all boils down to this. While receiving the National Medal of Arts, who appeared to reach for the U.S. President's pants? Don Rickles, Mel Brooks, or Richard Pryor? What? It's a weird question. He received the medal in 2015 for a lifetime of making the world laugh. And he continued doing so right on through the ceremony itself, pretending to pants the POTUS. Take a look.
That's my guy. A typically surprising moment from master parodist Melvin Kaminsky. Mel Brooks, the 2,000-year-old man. For young Frankenstein Spaceballs, Robin Hood men in tights. We got 4,041 winners, baby! Time for HQTs. Who won HQ? 4,041 of you blazing on in your saddles. Knowing Mel Brooks earning you $1.24. All right, not so bad for you Saturday night. Jillick 826, Cave Creek, Brittany, who? Alpha 85, Alpal. Angel R. Hmm, can't read the rest of it. Kills robots. Okay. Cool water. L Homer 23. Yeah. L Homer 23, you got a dollar twenty-four. You should change your name to a dollar twenty-four. If you don't want to win a dollar twenty-four, you want to win ten thousand, come back tomorrow. Uh-huh. Winner takes all tomorrow. But if you want a chance of winning more tonight, yeah, you can do so. Words is happening at 9:30. 15 minutes, 14 minutes from now, Anna Royceman will take you through those puzzles. At 9.30. Winner take all tomorrow. 10 grand. Harry Potter on Thursday. Yes, sir. Bobby Weir. Until I see you all again, manana. I'm Scott Rogowski signing off saying, be responsible. Have a happy and safe St. Patrick's Day. And remember, shoplifting is a victimless crime. Like punching someone in the dark. Good night. <laughs>